On this week's episode, we have a panda problem. Under the category of stupid boat things, let's try and put a steamroller on a pram. An INS stops by. And I'm Doug. Hey everybody, welcome to Cecilia's internet-based Yanni show on the internet. If George, uh, Georgia. If Chelsea was here, she'd say interweb. I missed that. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I'm down in uh, beautiful Ocean Reef, uh, Key Largo, Florida. We're having a blast. Uh, you know, the crew are having a blast. They have so many facilities for the crew here. It's unbelievable. During their breaks, they're playing uh, tennis and they have their own private pool. And they do have a crew lounge over there where they have video games and uh, free golf carts. It's, it's really nice. Kudos to Ocean Reef for taking care of the people who take care of your members. Uh, we did have some visitors, by the way. Uh, look at these two guys. Then these guys stopped by. And then the manatees just bolted. It's my opinion that the manatees were probably illegally here. And that's, uh, that's, that's a big deal on the Keys. But anyway, uh, yeah, INS stopped by and they were checking out some boats. Uh, I don't know what they're doing, but if y'all foreign crew and you're working in the US, I'd probably keep an eye out the window in case you see one of those boats because they were pretty serious. So uh, we're gonna jump right into yacht industry news. And uh, so what we need to do now is talk about our sponsors. Our sponsors make the show happen. Go ahead, roll them. Elite Air Conditioning of South Florida, whether it's refit, new installation, repairs, or maintenance, these guys can get it done on your yacht, your house, your aircraft carrier, your submarine, even your spaceship. Give them a call today. Hargrave Custom Yachts, the middle word being custom, they'll build anything you want. They'll build a gold-plated bathtub if you want or a 200-foot mega yacht. ITS, that stands for Interior Technology Services. If you need your carpet certified, these are the people. They will also do the walls, the cushions, any soft fabrics in the boat. Remember, ITS is your number one choice to get your carpets and interior cleaned. Crewhaven1501.com. If you're just entering town and you need a place to stay, this is the place to go. If you're even in a refit in a boat yard, they have housing right next to all the major yards. Check out Crewhaven at Crewhaven1501.com. Never forget, Monkey Butlers, Pink Rolls Royces, Bouncy Houses, and these houses do not drag in the middle of the night. Data Solutions. I do have 99 problems on board, but with the blender, they all get blended together, and I don't have any. MPT, Maritime Professional Training. This is the one school where you can go from your first STCW all the way up to Unlimited Master. Never forget, one school, unlimited possibilities. Look, the sponsors pay for the show. I do the show, all right? Uh, you guys watch the show. It's a win-win all the way around. So please support our sponsors. They make it happen, and every sponsor is handpicked to be totally relevant to what you guys need. You're never going to see a sponsor for shoes or buying a new car. It's all boat-related. All right, we're going to jump right into Yacht Industry News. Give me the scrolly thing. Okay. Don't forget, we support the $160 day rate for day workers. And let me explain this. Some people are like, that's still not enough. This is a global show. I mean, we have fans that watch the show in Australia, in Romania, in Ukraine. I'm not sure if they're watching in Ukraine right now. They might not have power. But that's global, okay? Just because somebody's making more money or, 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 or making a little less money in Fort Lauderdale doesn't mean that someone in the Mediterranean is making nothing, all right? Some of those guys are making 100 bucks a day. The 160 is the minimum, minimum. Fall Lauderdale's a bubble. You gotta think of the rest of the world. Anyway, pay them, pay them. It's not even your money. Come on, do I even have to say it? Okay, and don't forget the uh, bottom line scholarship. We're still working on that with MPT. Lisa over there is awesome. And uh, Blue Oceans, Amy. We're gonna get this together. We're gonna get some people trained up. I know it's taking time, but there's a lot of things going on. Okay, in Yacht Industry News, the first thing I wanna talk about. Oh wait, before I talk about anything, do you guys wanna see something kind of silly? So this is a steamroller that they need to put on a pram, and I'm assuming to move it from one dock to another. So this is a classic example of a steamroller operator not knowing what the term reserve buoyancy means. See, probably should have gotten his captain's license. 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about a captain who just got sentenced for killing 34 passengers. Uh, but first, I want to talk about the Viking. Viking, we all were sick of it. 92-foot Viking hit the beach here. Look at this. Right? We all know. Now it's off. But a very odd thing happened. Viking Yachts put a statement out the other day stating that the uh, engine shut down, uh, first the generators and then the mains from a uh, fuel malfunction. In other words, they didn't get fuel. Then they also stated that the anchor could not be dropped because the cat's paw was jamming the anchor. And my opinion, opinion is, well, the anchor was probably in tight on the cat's paw. Without hydraulics, they couldn't back it off and release the cat's paw. I'm just thinking that it's, a, it's weird that Viking even got involved because this boat's in 2016. I think it's changed hands a couple of times. It's obviously not a new boat problem. It's obviously not under warranty. I don't know. You guys tell me why Viking did that. Uh, it's kind of like it's like somebody driving an old Chevy down the road gets in a car accident, and then GM makes a statement saying, well, yeah, he, he, he hit a car and he got off the road. I don't know. I guess they're trying to cover their butt. But anyway, okay, on to this captain. Okay, we all remember the dive boat Conception, 75-footer. It had, 20, uh, had 33 passengers, uh, or 34 passengers killed. Uh, here, this is it burning. So they took the captain to, to, to court. Uh, uh, they, you know, they, they charged him with Siemens manslaughter, and he lost. Or they, they what do you call it? They found guilt. He was found guilty. Uh, they also made a couple other comments, like he lack of, uh, of a night watch, and uh, you know he jumped off. He didn't take care of the passengers. I'm going to make a couple of comments on this. I read the STC, uh, STCB, and uh, NSTC, whatever. NTSB. The, the whole crew were up top, and. Uh, there's no way they could get down below. Matter of fact, the whole boat was in flames. The only thing they could do was jump. Now, the other problem with not having a night watch, yeah, that was a problem. Uh, I want, the reason I'm bringing it up to you guys is because I don't care if you're on a 70-footer or a 170-footer. If you're anchored out, you need to have a watch. And so many crew are like, or captains are like, I only have four crew. How am I supposed to maintain a night watch? Get it done, dude. If, if you have a trip where the owner's like, I'm going to anchor out in the Exumas all week, you better get more crew because you're going to have the same problem if the whole crew or all the guests uh, get burned up on that boat. You don't want that on your conscience. i could tell you something else. He's looking at 10 years in jail. We're not talking about probation and some community service. We're talking about hard time. This is a captain who did not have a night watch on a boat that was anchored. Okay? Just let that sink in. 10 years. Siemens manslaughter. It's real. Okay, next. There is a panda problem. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but uh, so in yachting, we're having a huge panda problem. Take a look at this. Okay, so that's a panda driving a mega yacht. I can almost deal with that. And then this. Okay, this is a panda dropping the anchor. I'm not sure I could deal with that because how can you see the anchor through the, the thing? I mean, that's a safety issue, but okay, I get it. All right, now this. That's a panda driving a center console down in Florida. What's going on with the pandas? Now, I'm going to say, um, my opinion is, the last panda guy, maybe that wasn't his wife's. Maybe this was a good way to get the boat out on the weekend without getting in trouble, because we all know there's cameras. But anyway, I want you guys to keep a sharp lookout for pandas, because there's obviously a panda problem in South Florida or on yachts, and uh, it's, it's getting worse. The presidential yacht Sequoia, or former presidential yacht Sequoia, is actually on its way back to Maryland. It's, it, went, it started a repair in Maryland, then it went up to Belfast, Maine, then it got in this huge legal battle. I don't care about the legal battle, but I care about the boat. And now it's back on its way to Maryland. What they're going to do is restore it and put this thing at the Richardson Maritime Museum in Cambridge, Maryland. I'm so happy about this. This boat is historic. I know that there's another, you're going to go, oh, there's another one, but there really isn't. I'll explain in a minute. This boat was built in 1925. It's a Trumpy. I've been on it. It's pretty cool. You know, I actually saw it in Belfast, Maine. I didn't even know I was looking at it because it was all torn apart. I just said, oh, look at that old boat. Okay. Herbert Hoover was on this boat. This boat went through World War II. John F. Kennedy spent his last birthday on board this boat. Uh, Richard Nixon contemplated resigning, which he subsequently did, on this boat. Honey Fitz is the other one. Honey Fitz just got through a beautiful restoration. It's awesome. But the fact of the matter is she was never actually an official presidential yacht. Just like Air Force One, anytime a president steps on an airplane, it becomes Air Force One. Honey Fitz was a Kennedy boat. And when John Kennedy was on it, it became the presidential yacht. This boat, the Sequoia, 
was run by U.S. Navy personnel. It was part of the U.S. Navy registry. It was, in fact, a government vessel. It needs to be restored. It's a part of history. Thank God uh, all the lawsuits are over and they're, they're getting that done. I mean, I just love it, and I encourage everyone to check it, check it out when it's done. Okay, let's move on to bottom feeders. Give me the manatee. Give me the shark. Give me the shark. Um, this week is, every week there's a new reason why I'm excited, but I'll start from the top. Um, my first bottom feeder this week is Captain Sean Keller from Bureau Beach, Florida. Hi, Sean. You know me. I know you. Thank you so much for watching the show. It makes me so happy with my friends. I see them on bottom feeders because I don't pick these. Doug does. My second bottom feeder this week is Captain Jordan Trushan from Cloud Yachts. And... Jordan has been one of my best friends for years. He's actually the person that got me in the maritime industry. So it makes me more than thrilled to finally call out my friend Jordan. Thank you so much for watching my show. Love you. My third bottom feeder this week is Captain Jay Moore from Jacksonville, Florida, who is also an ocean reef. So thanks guys for keeping Doug company while we're not together, but we appreciate you. Thanks for watching the show. We'll see who's coming up next week. Okay. Now, we're going to go into crew corner, but before we go into crew corner, give me Amsoil. Dave is a southern regional rep for Amsoil products. What's that mean? That means synthetic oil. That means oil analysis. He'll even put the little things on your engine so it's easy peasy to get your oil tested. Check out the safety of your engine with Dave from Amsoil. And Amsoil, by the way, I think just got approved by Caterpillar, I'm pretty sure, to use it in all their engines under warranty periods. So that's good news for Amsoil. Uh, but anyway, uh, Amsoil is a pretty cool. We love Amsoil. And now we have to, come on, follow with me. I need the cannon. I miss the cannon. Give me the cannon. Okay, in crew corner this week, the question is, what do I do next? I mean, seriously, uh, this is probably on the minds of a lot of people. And Captain Sean, who I just gave a shout out to, and a few others, when Renaissance went up for sale, everybody's like, oh, retirement, retirement, retirement. And I got a little ticked about that because I'm not ready to retire. Uh, I know a lot of captains, a lot of senior crew are not ready to retire. But what do you got to do? I mean, you, you know, it's we have to make room for the younger guys coming up the up the the the, the, the ladder. And uh, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm I'm in my mid to late fifties. I've been I'm ex Coast Guard, and as soon as I got out of the Coast Guard, I got on yachts. I've been in yachts for 35 years. I've been a captain for 35 years. I was a captain when I was 27. It's all I know how to do. It's been all over the world, and uh, you know, with Renaissance selling, it's a funny thing. You know, uh, a lot of guys uh, are like, oh, my boss wants to buy the boat, but I want to drive it, and I'm the first one to go buy Renaissance, and I will hand, hand, gladly hand the keys over to you. Uh, and uh, of course, it'd be a sad day for me, but I want the boat to be in good hands and and continue on and um, you know the fact of the matter is you can do the most awesome job on the planet you can have the best owners on the planet it's not like an office one day it's all gone and um, by no fault of your own uh, you didn't screw up it's uh, the boats boats sell owners stop buying boats you know they're they're retired so what do I do well I got my broker's license I don't know if you guys know that I'm a broker with Hargrave and I'm actually listing this boat. I could continue to do that, uh, be a yacht broker. I could buy the pink pants. I could do that. I do feel that I have one more boat in me. You know, and when I say one more, when I jump on a boat, I don't go for six months. I go for five years. You know, being on Renaissance this trip reminds me of how much I like to be at sea. And, uh, you know, do I want to be a captain when I'm 70? Probably not. Uh, you guys tell me. I mean, I could go sell shoes. I mean, besides yacht broker and yacht captain, I mean, I'm just, uh, yacht management's a joke. Everybody laughs at those guys. Anyway, um, yeah, everybody's going to reach these crossroads. And what you have to do is you've got to prepare your future for this. Don't wait till the last minute. I'd like to think I'm pretty prepared. I'm most likely going to be a yacht broker and I'm gonna to continue to do what I do for crew by getting captains on boats that I sell. I've already done that for, I've been doing that for a long time. And uh, you know, same thing with getting owners on the right boats, I've been doing that. So it's probably a natural progression. I am gonna miss going to sea. But uh, the important thing is you guys treat your career as if it's gonna stop or, or your job as if it's gonna to end tomorrow and line yourself up. 
I guess what I'm saying is prepare for it. And um, that's what I'm going through right now. And, and uh, I don't know what you guys think I should do. But yeah, it's uh, yachting's, yachting's an absolutely amazing, amazing career. I've, I, I love it to death. Uh, but you do, have to, you do have to take care of your own future. That's the one thing. You can't just work yourself up the ladder to own the boat one day or something. Although I do own one. But anyway, I think that's it for Yacht Industry News. <laughs> just thinking out loud. Okay. Uh, so just plan for it. That's uh, Yacht Industry News. I'm Doug. Chelsea's not here. She'll be back next week. Uh, you guys have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next week. Bye.